Call of Duty has been one of the most popular video games for upwards of 10 years now. Over those 10 years, Call of Duty has changed in many, many ways, but the one thing that's always stayed the same is that Call of Duty is a first-person shooter. And one of the most important things about a first-person shooter is the weapons. They have to be interesting, feel good, feel powerful, and at the exact same time, stay balanced. And for Call of Duty developers, this has never really been an easy task. Pick any Call of Duty game, and you can probably pick pretty quickly what the overpowered weapon in that game is. Call of Duty 4, you got the M16. World at War, you got the MP40. And more recently in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the newest Call of Duty game, they added a new weapon called the VPR. This weapon was originally a complete piece of trash, and after a buff, was then the best weapon in the game and hated by almost every single player playing. There has always been this struggle with weapon balance, but in more recent years, Call of Duty added a new thing to the game. A new thing called weapon variants that has been exacerbated in the most recent Call of Duty game to a massive, massive extent. And if you ask me my opinion, if weapon variants are going to continue in the current form, this may be the thing that causes the downfall of Call of Duty. But what I'm telling you about weapon variants being the downfall of Call of Duty is not just my opinion. There's actually many psychological theories that actually support exactly what I'm saying, and one of the main ones is the Paradox of Choice. Now, the Paradox of Choice was originally a book written by Barry Schwartz, and I know this sounds like an audible ad that I'm going to tell you to go check out my link in the description but it's not at all. In fact, I don't even suggest reading the book unless you have to write a final paper in psychology or marketing for school. But this book summarizes the idea of less is more, a phrase I'm sure you've heard many times before. So to fully understand how weapon variants are doing harm to Call of Duty, you first have to understand what exactly the paradox of choice is. So since this theory has come out, it has basically been supported and taught by universities and colleges around the world. And the most common use of this theory is not normally in marketing. So let's look at an example of what the paradox of choice is. So let's say you walk into a grocery store. If you walk into a grocery store and you're walking through the aisles and you get to the end of one of the aisles and where the end of the aisle is you see a display and in this display they are selling soda. And in this display you see three different types of soda. You see Coke, root beer, and Pepsi. You decide you feel a little bit fancy today so you go with root beer and you continue on your shopping trip. However, another time you come into the grocery store, you see the same exact display, but instead of having three different types of soda in it, they have 15. They have Coke, Pepsi, Root Beer, Mountain Dew, Sprite, you name it, they have it in this display. And you sit and look at this display for a little while, and as you look at it, you just can't quite decide what type of soda you actually want to buy. And because there's too many choices, instead of actually picking the Root Beer and deciding on that, you instead decide not to get anything at all. Now, a couple of days ago, I was streaming on Twitch, and if you want to check that out, there's a link down in the description, but that's beside the point. And on Twitch, I asked you guys what you really thought about weapon variants, and the overwhelming response was is that you didn't necessarily love them or hate them, but the problem that you had with them is that in Infinite Warfare, there were so many of them that you were overwhelmed with the amount. It almost felt that there was no way you were ever going to obtain all of them, so why should you even start to try? And this is the exact definition of the paradox of choice. And the thing that actually makes this a paradox is you would think that in having more choices, you would be able to find the exact thing you want. In the example of the sodas, you would think you'd be able to find the exact flavor that you want to taste if you have 20... 25 different flavors of soda, when in reality it just makes it harder for that person to decide and they may actually end up not even getting a soda to end with. And if you don't believe me yet, there's actually many different studies that support this evidence. One of the most famous ones is the one dealing with jam. Yes, the thing that you make sandwiches with, you know, like peanut butter and jam, that kind of jam. And this study goes like this. So the study took place at a fair and at this fair there were two stands selling the exact same type of jam. However, one of the stands was sampling 24 different flavors of jam, and the other stand was sampling only six. So both stands ended up dealing with the same amount of customers, but of course the stand with 24 different types of samples gave out many, many more because they had more to sample from. 
However, even though they gave out many more samples, the total amount of people that actually went on to buy jam from the stand was only 3%. Now the stand sampling only six flavors of jam then went on to sell to 30% of the people that sampled the jam. The numbers are staggering. The difference between the two isn't even close, and this is just some of the evidence that supports this theory. Now, in Infinite Warfare, there's right around 300 different types of weapon variants, whether they be Mark II or regular weapon variants, around 300. That number is massive. Now, if you look at the top-selling Call of Duty game of all time, Modern Warfare 3, if we count up all of the weapons in that game, including the pistols, machine pistols, and launchers, we have a total of 49 weapons. It's very clear to see the difference in choices you have between the two games. What is also very clear is the difference in sales numbers. And now that I've kind of explained to you what the paradox of choice is, I'm going to give you my opinion on it. Because I don't think the paradox of choice fully explains the problem with weapon variants in Infinite Warfare. In Infinite Warfare, there are so many weapons to choose from. Right around 300 of them. And I don't think the problem people have when they play this game is that they're not able to choose which one of these 300 weapons they want to use. I think the problem is is that people who play video games tend to be a little bit of completionists. Whether they feel like going for all of the gamer score or all of the trophies in a given game or whether they're one of those people that just need to hit max level in Call of Duty. And these people who are completionists may look at Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, see the vast amount of weapons you need to earn and the vast amount of playtime it would actually take to earn these things and just be completely turned off. Instead of having too many choices, there is simply too much to do and not enough time. You gotta remember, Call of Duty runs on a yearly cycle. And you have to remember, in any given year, people are only going to have a certain amount of time to play any given Call of Duty game. In a video I made earlier this year on February 3rd, 2017, I made a video called How Much Does Infinite Warfare Actually Cost? And in that video, I took every single item in the game and did a calculation to figure out how long it would actually take to earn every single item in Infinite Warfare. And that calculation came down to 49.6 days of in-game play playtime. That doesn't count for the amount of time you're waiting in lobby, it doesn't count for the amount of time it takes to load a game, only the in-game playtime. And this was before they added new items, new weapons, new camos. It's insane the amount of time it would take to actually earn everything in-game without spending extra money. And it comes down to this paradox, this paradox of choice, which really causes this problem. In theory, it makes sense that the more content you add into a Call of Duty game, the more people it's going to appeal to, the more people are going to like it, and the more people will buy and play your game. However, there becomes a point where you add too much, and all of a sudden, the people that are going to be playing your game are going to get overwhelmed, and all of a sudden, the people who you are selling soda to are no longer buying soda because there are too many options. Call of Duty has been one of the top selling Call of Duty games for over 10 years now. The question is, are weapon variants going to be the thing that stops that? I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, it'd be fantastic if you'd hit that like rating. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, peace out. We are, we are reaching for the stars.